my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe, bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. Um, we, oh boy, what, actually, when I'm, when I post this, I'm traveling. So I'm recording this in advance. I'm trying, I'm trying to be like so organized for like traveling and pre-filling and everything like that. So I'm hoping this is still my February GPR. <laughs> Other than this video goes up. It should be. I can't imagine the vast majority of this would change. Um, it just depends on quite a few of these. I'm getting them through the library. So it just depends on how long it takes shipping. Some of them have shipped. Some of them I'm still like in position. And because there's like 14 copies been ordered in our system. But they are all sitting in cataloging. So they could take a month or they could take two days. So yeah. Um, I want to tell you about my plans for February. Hello. You want to come? Oh my goodness. You're naked. You don't normally not have a sweater in February. What is it? Anyways, um, I have plans for February. I'm traveling for the first week, so I'm trying to, as well as February is shorter, so I'm trying to be conscious of that. So I'm picking, I think, a couple fewer books than I would for a normal month. And um, yeah, this is the uh, goal of books. What? goal for the books that I want to read in February. So first off, uh, I tried to do a reread of this in December and with my surgery and everything, it just got held up and I didn't get to it. So I'm going to be doing my reread of Gideon the Ninth. I read it in October, I want to say. I loved it, but like I was kind of like just so mind blown and distracted by it that I like didn't retain it to review it kind of thing. It's like necromancy in space with some lesbians. I'm here for it. As soon as I get my pre-order copy of The Hand on the Wall, I am going to be reading it. Uh, I think it comes out January 22nd, right? Or like that Tuesday of that week. Um, and like if it doesn't come on time, like the day that it's pre-ordered, I'm basically going to miss it because of my flight um, to go to Ontario. So um, when I get back, my hands are going to be all over that bad boy. It is the third, and I hope, final book to the trilogy, uh, Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I say I hope because I can't take any more cliffhangers, questions, mysteries. I need answers, and I just, I know we're going to get to the end, and there's not going to be answers to everything, and I feel like there's going to be one big thing that she's not going to answer, and she's going to leave open-ended. I just have a feeling in my gut, um, but I'm so excited to read it. Boy, am I so excited. The Vanishing Stare did things to me. That thing is so, like, fresh in my brain from whenever the last time I read that series was. Um, so I'm just getting my hands all over the hand on the wall as soon as I get, get it in my hands. One of my goals for 2020 is to read the Caraval series. I have already read Caraval and Legendary, but I haven't read Finale. And they're very, like, twisty plots. Like, you have to, like, pay attention to characters and where everything is um so i want to do a reread so i'm going to try and binge the series back to back to back um so reread of carval and then legendary and then finally read finale which i got um the signed copy i still don't understand why they changed the last one to purple i love purple don't get me wrong it's just very confusing that there's like a blue black a black black and then a purple suddenly i don't know where they were going with that so i am excited about this people love or hate this series and everyone i've heard that has gotten to the third book because they love the series has liked the series they've, they've said it's like a good wrap-up it's a solid wrap-up which is a difficult thing for a lot of authors to do even seasoned authors on New York Times bestsellers that they don't know how to wrap up a series. So that gives me just so much hope. And I actually don't think she's announced anything new, which is kind of surprising. Before the third book comes out of like their debut series, they tend to like have an announcement for what's coming next, right? Amanda Foody just did it. Like we're waiting for Queen of Volts, the third book in the Ace of Shades series. And she's announced her middle grade Pokemon Nevermore mashup, de uh, middle grade debut, which sounds like amazing. I didn't know that I needed that mashup, but I do. I feel like that's kind of normal if you hit New York Times bestsellers that they want to keep you going. They want to keep you like present in people's minds. But I haven't seen that from her, which is kind of weird. So hopefully we keep getting more. I don't know what is up with my hands today, why I feel the need to do so much with them. Anyways, um, I also hope to pick up Reverie. Uh, this came out, I think it was supposed to come out in January 2020 and then I got pushed earlier, which I feel like that's a good sign to, I think it was end of November, early December. I am so curious about this. I just know it's supposed to be some queer magic and that's literally the entire knowledge, spectrum of my knowledge of this book. Plus it has a hella pretty cover. Um, 
And yeah, I, th I think like I read the, the bio, I think when their cover reveal happened, because I'm always the little shit that posts the cover reveals and makes you all spend money in the group, the TPR Beyond group. So like, I feel like I, I had to have read the summary when it like revealed the cover. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And I remember being like, want to read, but I just remember that there's some queer magic in it. So hopefully it's good. Everyone that I know who has read it has really liked it. So that gives me a ton of faith and I can't wait. Why am I doing this with my hands again? I can't wait to get it in my hands from my library. Dude, I'm also reading Ash. I don't know what, what is wrong with me today? I'm also, I maybe have, have I had not enough coffee? I've had like half of a cup, that's it. And a, and a solid night's, well that'll do, a solid night's sleep and coffee for me is out of the realm of normal. Anyways, I'm reading Ash Lords by Scott Wright, Wright, Jin, Wright, Jin Jir? I'm so sorry. It's not a difficult name, but for some reason, my brain doesn't know what to do with EIs in names or like consonants like N or like TG that are together. I just I don't know what's wrong with my brain. Anyways, um, Scott is coming to the TBR and Beyond group in the month. I'm so excited. Oh my God. He, uh, it's not on my list, but Christina Lynn Herman is also coming to the group in February. I'm so excited to do live author chats because... We, like, just want to talk to them. Most of the reason, because we're all Canadian and no one tours in Canada, so this is our only opportunity. But the cover of Ash Lords is glorious. It is the most glorious of things. Um, he also wrote Nixia. I read first book of Nixia, and I have the second book, and I'm waiting to get my hands on the third book. I'm trying to find the hardcover, which has been more difficult than you can even imagine in Canada. Um, but I loved the first book of the Nixia series. It was a really, really solid sci-fi. It was a solid debut. I also feel like we don't get a ton of male voice is in YA so I love that I'm so excited for Ash Lords it sounds amazing there's like horses and they look kind of demonic and messed up and like I'm just excited for this and the people that have read arcs of it are given a lot of positives praise and I think it's also in like a book of the month or one of those book box subscriptions so I'm excited and come join the group um for his chat I'm so excited about that book so excited I'm also going to be picking up the Guinevere Deception by Kristen White I feel like I've just been burned by this author a few times. So I tried Anti-Darken twice. I bought that book before reading it. That was my own like fault. Um, and I DNF'd it both times. I tried so hard. That has so many elements of promise for me, of things that I adore, and I could not get through it. I tried so damn hard and couldn't get through it. And everyone praised that series. I'm like, what the hell am I missing? And then I read an arc of The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, which isn't bad. But it just, like, it wasn't it for me. So, um, I'm going through the library this time. Um, the Guinevere Deception. King Arthur is a myth that I need a good retelling of. And, like, I'm trying not to be shady. That's not even true. Um, <laughs> I've read King Arthur retellings in the past, like, couple years. Because I'm, I want to gobble them up. Um, none of them have really, like, done it for me. Um, one last year especially was just, like, a big swing and a miss for me. So, I'm, I have high hopes of this, but if this lets me down, I think I gotta give up on Kirsten White. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know so many people enjoy her stuff, it's just something maybe just doesn't connect with me. I don't know if it's the writing or her tone or whatever. But, I wanna love this, cause I, I don't hate this cover actually. There's a lot, all the gold is like reflective foiled under the library lamination. And the under dust jacket has like a like a sword and um foiled like a black sword on it on the on the under dust jacket. So like I want to love this. I'm going in trying to be like it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. Please don't suck. Um. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I like that we're going with Guinevere. I feel like we mess pretty hysterically badly with Guinevere an awful lot and misuse her in a lot of our retellings in pop culture. So I hope we get a strong Guinevere. I'm also picking up. <sighs> Dangerous Alliance by Je Je Janique uh, Cohen. I have so much hope for this book, and you want to know why? It's literally the stupidest reason. Because there's a dad joke on the cover. That is literally my reason for thinking this book is going to be good. It says, an ostentatious romance. And they spell Austin tatious Like, Austin like Jane Austen, because it's a Jane Austen retelling. Yes, I'm a fan of dad jokes, okay? That's why I love Jin from BTS. So, like, I just have, like, tons of hope and praise and promise for this. I haven't heard a single review. I also kind of want it to be good because I kind of love the underdust jacket. It's a simple bitch. It's literally just white. I don't know if you can even read, tell. It's literally just white, and then it has the spine with a little bit of this, like, detailing, the, the uh, border. 
and just black. It's the simple bitch, but I'm kind of a simple bitch too. So I really want to like it, so I have an excuse to buy it. I have not read um, voluntarily anything from Jane Austen, which is going to get me shot in some communities. Um, I did read Pride and Prejudice for school, and I also had to read Emma. I think that was Jane Austen, right? I detested both of them. <laughs> I don't know if it was because I was forced to read it or I had a deadline for it or whatever. I really didn't like them. I think, like, that's the thing with, like, classics. They're a product of the time and you have to appreciate certain things about it to get it. Um, I just, I hope it's good. Lady Victoria Ashton has everything she could want. An older sister, happily wed. The future for family stays secure and ample opportunity, um, and ample opportunity to while her time away in the fields around her home. But the, the, Oh my god. But Vicky's <laughs> comfortable, idyllic life is overturned in the course of one night. Her sister's husband is a terrible cad, and now Vicky can ma must marry or find herself and her family destitute. Armed only by the wisdom she has gained through her beloved novels by Jane Austen, she enters society's treacherous season. It sounds like it could be a very Sam book, or a book that is so stupidly sickly romance-heavy that I want to throw it against a wall. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'll have to take a picture of the wall at dents if it happens. But yeah, high hopes. I hope this is awesome. It's also blurred by Jessica Clues, which gives me, you know, a little bit more hope because she's the author of A Shadow of Bright and Burning, which I actually really enjoyed that trilogy. Most people haven't read it and I enjoyed it. It's more low romance leaning, but I can I can take the, that level. I am beyond, beyond, why am I being so extra today? Beyond excited for the library of the unwritten. I, by day, I'm a librarian. Unfortunately, it's not as, like, fun or glamorous as, like, the show of the librarians. I mean, I don't... Mind you, I take my life in my hands getting in my car to go to work, because where I live, people drive, like, absolute dumbasses. But, um, yeah, the library has been written. I love any books about books set in worlds leaning towards books uh, with librarians, with book magic, with library magic, anything that can be, like, using the literary world and all of our icons... In, as something of more than just like a background or a prop or something. That's why I love the Reader series so much. It's all about like the magic power of literature and like all of these like senses that we take for granted. It's so wonderful because they mess with that shit. So the Library of the Unwritten sounds damn amazing and I'm kind of annoyed that I haven't seen it anywhere um, and I hope it's great. It's uh, on its way to me. It shipped three days ago so I should have it next week and that is one that I'm probably going to get to like early early on in the month of February. I also cannot wait to pick up Blood Countess by Lana Popovic. Um, I, I'm a fan of like the gothic-y leaning stuff that we're doing, especially with historical fictions and mysteries. That's like my bread and butter genre. It's like that historical fiction mystery mashup. And then we're like leaning to darker shit, which is awesome. Um, and so we're, we're doing Lady Dracula. I'm so excited for that. Uh, me and my friend Jennifer are just like kind of drooling, salivating, watching the cover and like watching the release date come close. Like, I just really want it. My library copy is on its way. I've never read anything by Lana Popovic though. So I know some people like loved and some people just hated her other book, like Wicked Like a Wildfire or something like that. I never actually picked it up. I've never seen it anywhere. I, uh, I read the, the summary because I saw it like floating around on like groups and I was like, nah. I don't think I'd like that. So I just never got to it. But Blood Countess sounds like right up my freaking alley. I'm so excited. And I cannot wait for my library copy to show up. And if it's pretty and I like it, maybe I'll buy my own copy. I am also picking up The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I have just like a lot. I just know I'm going to love this. I don't know how to explain it other than I just know I'm going to love it. That's take that at what you will. That's just facts. Um, I know it's like the same as like the Night Circus. No, nothing really happens in the Night Circus now that I think back about it. But I loved that book. I don't know why. Her writing was amazing and the history and like just the magic realism and all that crap. And then this book is a book about book magic with books and magic. That's like we just established this. That's my bread and butter. So I'm like really excited to pick this up. I just know like there's doors around the world um, and like they can be different things and you can only find them really when you're not looking for them. And our main character finds one. I also am going to make some controversial statement here. I think the UK cover is disgusting. <laughs> I mean, disgusting is probably a long way. I, it's a hot mess when I look at it. I don't understand why people are like, oh my god, the US cover is disgusting. I want the UK cover. I'm like, it looks like a duct tape scrapbook. What am I missing? I don't understand. So I love this. 
actually it's got the keys that are all lifted parts of the ribbon the silver parts are all like foily and then the end pages are still pretty this is the first time actually one of the rare times probably not the first time a rare moment where i appreciate the u.s cover doesn't happen often but when it does I shall voice my opinion on such. One of my 2020 goals for myself was also to read one arc a month, so I'm going to be picking up my arc of Woven in Moonlight. This book actually just came out in January. Um, I got an arc in late August, I think, and just things have been chaotic. Um, I know it's, uh, oh, I, did I? Uh, Bolivian. It's Bolivian own voices, which is awesome. And there's supposed to be like a revolution and like, someone is trying to help someone else the main characters try to help someone else but in order to like it's not in their real benefit to help the person that they're supposed to help maybe they're going to be challenged about that it just sounds really cool um i really like the author online she's really just like fun and cute and sweet i love the map i love the freaking cover there's a sloth on it and um i just i i have another just like the starless seat i just know i'm gonna really like it for some reason i can't explain it and on the exact opposite spectrum, I'm going to be picking up Crown of Coral and Pearl, I think, by Mara Rutherford. I'm not sure. I have, like, doubts that I'm going to like this book. You know what I mean? Like, I just look at it and I'm like, I'll try it. But I don't have the highest of hopes right now. I don't know why. I don't hate the cover. I kind of like the under dust jacket a little bit. It's like a deep purple blue. And then the spine is in like a foiled pink. There's nothing else done with it. But like I can appreciate at least the cover aesthetics. The color aesthetics. Um, but I just like, when I read this, like, it sounds like it could be cool. If it's like well written. It also sounds like I could get halfway through this and be like, I've read this novel before. 14 million times. Okay, so I hope I enjoy it, but I'm very hesitant going into this one. I haven't heard many reviews, so eh, I hope. I am hoping to pick up Angel Mage by Garth Nix this month. I have somehow in, gotten to 27 years of age. 27 and a half, actually. No, even more. Almost 28. Wow, I'm old. Um, of age, and I've never read anything by Garth Nix somehow. I know the name. I know there's like the Sable or Gabriel or whatever it is. That series, it's really popular. I just never interacted with it as a kid somehow. I don't know. So he had a new one come out in 2019 called Angel Mage. It sounds really cool. Like we're messing with the whole concept of angels being good and bad and like power dynamics. I'm more interested. This sounds weird. I want to at least try him. And I, if I get to this, I'm like, no, I just the story itself is not for me or I don't like this character, but I can deal with the writing because he has a book coming out in 2020, I think it is called The Left-Handed Bookseller of London or something like that. That one's what really interests me. So I really want to try Angel Mage and hopefully I love it. Um, it sounds like a whole bunch of messed up. There's like someone is like not not cremated. What's the opposite of cremated? Well, I guess it wouldn't be the opposite. They're, like, frozen, and then for some reason they get, like, unfrozen in a new time, and, like, all of their world has basically flipped on its side. The people in power are now, like, the people being abused, and she wants to, like, use the angels to, like, mess with that power dynamic. It sounds really cool. Could be really cool. It's also a beast size. It's huge. Like, this set... 530 pages. Like, it's big. So... Hopefully I love this. I like, I really like the cover too, actually. There's a lot of like glitters and metallics in it. So again, if I like it, maybe I have a reason to buy it when I go to buy the next book that he has, The Left-Handed Bookseller of London. I'm also going to pick up The Never Tilting World. I'm excited for this. Oh, sorry, by Ridge Pecco. So I tried to read The Bone Witch, the first book. I kind of like ran out of renewals, I think, on the book. And like, I only got a little bit of, it was a slower pace book. I was not at the time wanting to read a slower pace. I can appreciate slower pace books as long as something like they do something with it. Never Tilting World came out. I was like, oh, that cover looks so cool. And then they didn't do anything with it. There's nothing on the under dust jacket. There's no foils. There's no list, like glosses lifted. Nothing. There's no metallics in the background to be like spacey. Basic bitch on this one. Okay. And I mean that in a negative way in a rare moment. Okay. So I couldn't justify spending like 20, yeah, $22. I was like, you, you didn't do anything. Honestly, I, I feel like if the cover, <laughs> I bought more basic covers for like the same or more, but I'm like, you had potential here. There are covers that you get and you're like, I don't know what you're going to do with that. Like, that's just kind of shit that you got dealt with that cover. But like this one, I'm like, you could have done so much cool stuff with this. There's like the side of like the world that basically the world split in half through a series of events and the 
characters one sister essentially is running the side that always sees the sun which is like hot 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 all the time and one is running the side that never sees the sun so it's cold all the time and ice and winter and then they are brought together it sounds like for like an ultimate duel to end the world and pick a winner finally and fix this like rift in the world it sounds really cool so um i hope i like it i know they're supposed to it's filipino owned voices and i believe i saw somewhere it's supposed to be female female romances um I have to triple check, but I'm pretty sure the author posted that on Goodreads. So I hope I love this. I really, really, really do. The author has a couple more works kind of coming in 2020 and 2021. And then she has the Bone Witch series that I could go back and read too. So I really want to like this because I just get really good vibes from the author and all of the, of the writing. And if I get to the end and I'm like, oh, I didn't like this, I'm going to be disappointed, honestly. <laughs> I'm going to be trying Chilling Effect by Valerie Valdez. Um, I have been debating if I should buy this book because I'm I'm just, it's one of those books where I'm too curious to not read it, you know what I mean? And when I was checking the book at the library, the library staff at the front was like, hey, do you know there's a sci-fi where there's janitors in space? And I was like, no, but now I want to read it. <laughs> out of pure curiosity so i have that title somewhere now but yeah kidnappers alien emperors psychic cats and she's out of coffee <laughs> as a caffeine addict no but i um i hope this is good i'm just too curious about this to not give it a go and i saw it on my library's new and notables in uh new to the collection shelf so i grabbed it so hopefully i love it i just and I hope it's weird in a good way, not like a, what the hell am I reading? I have been curious about reading Upon a Burning Throne by Ash Ashok Banker since I, like, it was announced as purchased um, by a publisher. I didn't realize how big it was. It doesn't have generally all that many good reviews on Goodreads, but I'm curious because he's like, um, he's like the author in India. Like, he's that's like their their big like fame to claim that's their you know George R. R. Martin that's their that's their big author so I'm so curious I know translations can be difficult I don't know if this is a translation or he wrote it in his other in like a his second language or something like that I'm just curious like I have really high hopes it's like over 650 pages like I just know it's supposed to be a big epic high fantasy so I also oopsies close I also picked up the audiobook so if I struggle with the paper only because I'm probably going to bring this one with me on my trip um then I can or I guess that wouldn't make sense because I wouldn't bring this with me <sighs> I'll figure something oh, I guess I'll have to read it once I come back from my trip but that way if I struggle with the paper only I have the audiobook as well so hopefully I love it I don't know how this translates to only 20 discs though that doesn't make sense to me in my brain. I'm also going to be picking up Queen of the Conquered. I am so curious about this one. I really like the cover. I became interested in it when the cover got released. And then its own voices in a couple different representations. Um, I know the uh, author themselves is transgender. Um, I know that the, I think it's supposed to be like British imperialism specific to a certain uh, southern um, island. Is it the Caribbean? I, think, I want to say Caribbean. My copy from the library has shipped. I am waiting for it. I It doesn't have a ton of reviews online, honestly, and they released the cover for the sequel. So I'm really, really curious about this. The author also has a couple other titles out there, so I'd like to give them a go. Hopefully we can support diverse authors. And I just really want to see this cover in person for some reason, too. So hopefully I enjoy it. I'm all here for, like, us messing with, you know, imperialism and history involved with that especially when it's like not a big center country like you know india or the united states even india i feel like we don't read a ton about that but like that's one that's well known and i actually learned in school about that one we didn't really learn about a lot of the smaller islands i'm also picking up the deathless girls by kieran millwood hargrave i'm so freaking excited about this one um the uk cover is glorious so if you have to buy well you should buy the book if you're gonna buy the book buy the uk one off of book depository um like all of the browns are foiled and then like the end pages are beautiful and then the under dust jacket has like that beautiful um like iron gate work oh it's so pretty and again foiled snakes on the spine it's beautiful and then there's like flowers throughout the rest of the books it's beautiful design it also sounds amazing girls get kidnapped before they can go through like their rite of passage in their small community and then like when they're there they're talking to one of the other people that i think were stolen and i think there's a romance that develops between her and one of the other girls um but like they learn that the dragon is this mysterious terrifying myth and man who takes girls and like 
they're gonna have to fight him. And my friend Jennifer read it and freaking loved it, and the audiobook was somehow only like eight US dollars on Audible, so I bought it. I'm so confused by that price. But um, yeah, I'm so excited about this, so freaking excited about this, and like I just never want to give this book away, it's so pretty. I'm also going to be picking up Steel Crow Saga by Carl Kruger. I have just like such such high hopes for this one. I just, the people that have read it, the few people seem to have really, really enjoyed it. Um, I almost bought it a few times, but it's kind of like $38, $39 in Canada, which is a high price point for an author I've never read and for a book that I've never really heard many reviews on. Four destinies collide in a uni unique fantasy of world of war and wonders where empire is won with enchanted steel and magical animal companions fight alongside their masters in battle. It sounds really cool and epic. Um, who read it? I think Mel to the any read it. Yes, she did. Yes, because the author is Filipino American. I remember she read like a bunch of Filipino authors. So again, great getting some diverse rep and I hope it's awesome. I also love that we have like the four there because it's like the four worlds fighting against each other and I hope I love it. I think it's supposed to be the start of a sequel. I also love the the blurbing from Fonda Lee on the front which is literally what made me pick it up in the bookstore. It's like Pokemon combined with Avatar the Last Airbender and I was like okay I have to try that. <laughs> and my backup for the month which I honestly don't know that I'll get to this month really because of how short the month is and all my traveling but my backup for the month is The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis. If I don't get to this in February I'm gonna get to it in March at the very beginning. I know that we're supposed to have women of color and we're supposed to have some female female romances in this. It's a messing with westerns and I feel like western is a genre that needs to be messed with an awful lot because boy is that a problematic <laughs> genre when you look historically at what gets published in there. Um, the country of Ar Arqueta calls them good luck girls. They know their luck, they they know their luck is anything but. So to a welcome house as children branded with curse markings, trapped in a life they would never have chosen, when they accidentally kill a man, accidentally killing someone, um, the five girls risk a dangerous escape and harrowing journey to find freedom, justice, and revenge in a country that wants them to have none of that. Pursued by Arcata's most vicious and powerful forces, both human and human, their only hope lies in the bedtime story passed from one good luck girl to another, a story that the only the youngest or most desperate would ever believe. It's going to make them, it's going to take more than luck for them to survive. It sounds a lot like more paranormally messing with Devils Unto Dust by Emma Burquist, which I loved. So, I'm so excited for this. Again, we got a main character of color and we got known voices because the author is also a person of color. So like, it's wonderful. So those are all the books that I hope I'm trying to get to, hopefully. It's a lot of like, maybe, hopefully, giving me a note in case I don't, um, in that sentence there. But I hope I can get to these in the month of February. If not, ba the, I, th all of these books basically would just be put on my March TBR because I want to desperately read all of them. Those are the books that I plan on reading in the month of February. I will link them all in the description box down below with all of my social media. Follow me and I will follow you back. And let me know in the comment section what you are going to be reading February, if you've read any of these, what your thoughts were, and I will see you in the next video.